Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on shanshan.co. Today we're going to react to Stephanie Kilgrass. So let's check out her channel. So look at her channel. She has this nice sculpture at the top. You kind of get a feel of her, what her style is, which is really cool. She has a website and some of her social media and her print site. So I think that's really smart. You got two sites to your shops prints and originals so that's kind of what you want and then uh, Instagram to kind of see your latest stuff her logo is kind of interesting it's just kind of a mask but you don't get a feel for what she looks like uh, but some people like to be more private so she has uploads this is her first uh, list here sculptures paintings popular uploads I would do the popular uploads on top and reviews blogs and blabbing that's kind of funny <laughs> so let's go to the first video this one is called Miniature Teeth Denture Sculpture from Poly Polymer Clay Phil Fimo Tutorial. Maybe turn it down a little bit. It's pretty loud. Hello, today we are making some teeth. You could use these for a math scientist lab or a dentist. I personally am going to use that those smiling teeth for a smiling boy. And first I started to make the front and um, <clears throat> the front row of teeth. So right off the bat she has kind of she shows the teeth so you know what you're getting into. So that's good and then she goes straight into the video. On a round metal cutter. In the end, you could actually make them directly on a tile, but at that time I thought I was going to bake them on the, um, the round cutter, so that's, that's a good option. You simply cut a piece of white stripe. <laughs> I just thought about the group, the music group, the white stripes, that's why. I just hesitated so simply it's a really nice zoom shot she's got a really tight zoom it's focused only on her everything else is blurred out so it's very tight focal length probably 1.5 1.2 so you got a really nice uh, effect there with green in the background good contrast uh, let's skip ahead just a little bit True. to sculpt so you don't make anything wrong and so you make the top and the bottom and now we are making I feel like mothers. we're making cocaine with it, the razor blade. You are going to cut four pieces of thick white stripes, like so. So let's skip ahead just a little bit here. A great tool, so never be afraid of using toothpicks, only tool. So she's forming the teeth, and I guess, of the molars. Always looking at my reference picture and then making the top and bottom. Now I just removed the front row of teeth and I'm added it to the molars. It's just a really nice speaking voice, very slow, evenly paced, and very calm. So it goes with the style of painting, I think. Let's scrub ahead a little bit. And again, I just put it on a tiny tile and then removed some of the inner flesh. I feel like she's digging into my jaw. Like, ooh. And then pushed it out. And then I'm just adjusting the sculpt of the inside. This is so weird. I don't know why you'd have teeth like this made, but they're very cool looking. I'm using one of those uh, embossing tools that everyone always asks me where I got them. I just got them at an online craft store and I just cannot find the reference anymore because I have them for years now. I'm pretty sure you can find them in any good craft store though. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. And finally, check if the teeth fit one on top of each other. And you can bake and you're ready to go. Don't forget to varnish. And you are done. That is pretty cool. I don't know what the use of it is, but it's kind of interesting to make a little sculpture like that. And it ends with her Patreon or subscribe shop. Uh, let's go to the next video. It's definitely kind of the AMR music where you have in the background. You're like chilling and kind of vibing to it. So you have it in the background, which is really good for watch time. So you can really increase your watch time if you kind of make it just kind of a chill and relaxing video and painters might play it over and over again. So she's probably getting a high view count just off that. So this one is called the next video, Ancient Books in Time, Slow Working and Living. So here you actually get to see the artist. Skip 
ahead a little bit. So she's reading. Hello, my loves. My loves, yeah, well, I, I keep wanting to call you that, so be with me today. I am trying something new. Well, welcome to a very relaxed video this week where I will be talking about slow working, time and ancient books. So she has a really nice presentation with the colored pencils up front and as well as kind of her sketchbook laid out, these ancient books that are really cool, uh, very artistic, obviously their own piece of art in themselves. And then she has this mushrooms. I don't know what she's going to do with them. I did put a little bit more thought and time into scripting this video and truly wish you will enjoy the text and pace of it. The books you see me reading and leafing through in this video are from a very dear friend of mine. I received these a few months ago, specifically for me to work on for my solo show next year. The solo show is going to be all about books. That's also the reason why my friend has been gifting me with many other books of various sizes, languages and ages she wanted to get rid of. Her trash is undoubtedly my treasure and my solo show will be full of very different books. I like how she, she has short fingernails, it's very practical as an artist. A lot of times you'll see some women they are trying to keep their beauty up and they'll have longer fingernails and you're like, are you a painter? How do you paint with longer fingernails? It's always a little strange. So she has really practical uh, hands. Let's scroll ahead a little bit here. Still a monarchy. Another nine years would have to pass until the French Revolution. Uranus, the planet, wasn't discovered yet. It had to wait another year for William Herschel. The US went in the midst of their revolutionary war to gain independence from Britain. It's really interesting she's adding kind of this. I love history, but it's just kind of interesting to add history on top of a sculpture because I don't see the connection between the mushrooms and the history. Maybe I missed something because I'm skipping ahead. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. The presence of these ancient volumes, quite charismatic. I like the detail magical. shots. So I decided after... Like you can see this, she has this really narrow focus, probably maybe a two focal length. So the rest of the background is completely blurred and you see these mushrooms up front and the details. So it, it just really visceral look by just doing that camera length and lens. Is it volume on? Control work. Maybe I am wrong, but I don't think it matters all that much either way. Nowadays, books have become commodities, objects that we buy, rent, gift, and often throw away. They are just another of these mass-produced items, no longer cherished as the small miracles, vehicles of knowledge or stories that they are. Yeah, that's really interesting how it's kind of... People kind of switch to kind of the Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, really short text lifestyle. And then because they're doing that all the time, they can't really read books. Because <laughs> if you do that all the time, and you don't read, you'll just forget how to read books. Not forget, but it'll be much harder because your brain will just be like, oh, we don't need that information. So it's important to read books at least once a week to be able to retain that knowledge and the ease of reading long form. But it's interesting, yeah, the value of it is just not there. Like you go to your Barnes and Noble and it's just like, the selection just sucks nowadays and I love a good bookstore and you go there and you're like, what is this? They have all these games in there. It's like, who the hell cares about this? Children's books, all this stuff. You're like, what is all this junk in here? Just horrible selection of books. Like I can never find a good book in there anymore. Maybe I just bought a lot of the good books, but yeah, it's just a really sorry state of the bookstore. So let's skip ahead a little bit. As we are tempted to work or do chores at the same time, never quite willing to give our full time and attention to the story. That's cool, she's kind of changed the view. As many artists, I work alone and from home. And I have the tendency, like many others, to put on audiobooks, podcasts, music or videos in the background when I work. However, yep. the sheer <sighs> quantity of information that is propelled to my brain is often tiring and I find myself numb again. Yeah, that's true. Using listening to podcasts constantly is like... Because <laughs> I do that, I do delivery and it's like constantly like... <laughs> Joe Rogan, I probably listen to three Joe Rogans a day. And it's like, <laughs> you talk to other people and they're like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> they're like, go listen to music. I'm like, I've heard all the songs, right? But it's just funny, you know, the artist's lifestyle with the podcast is so funny. You rush it. Slowing down your practice and putting more effort into your skills and techniques is the most valuable gift you can give to others. 
It's so weird. I don't know what she's doing. And staring holes into your wall is a peaceful endeavor as well. Your subconscious often needs time to figure things out and pausing throughout your day. I mean, she can take a photo of this or sell it like that. So we live at a time when many of us yearn to pause and stop rushing. And while it isn't always that easy to achieve and sometimes almost impossible, it is a goal worth fighting for and that I wish upon all of you. And this concludes today's video. I really hope you enjoyed watching me work in silence. I like it's kind of a symbolic work, but I kind of feel bad she's using these old books to put these sculptures together, but it's cool if she disassembles them. All right, this is called Stop Be Getting Bullied by Algorithms. You're worth more than machines. Instagram for artists. Ooh. This is a long video, but uh, we're just gonna play snippets. Hi, I am Stephanie. I'm an artist, and if you don't know me, I do things like this and that. I also draw, mm. and sometimes I paint. Now, in today's video, I would like to discuss with you something that has been going on my nerves for quite a while, and that is social media, and more specifically, Instagram. Now, I have an Instagram that is fairly big. I have over 200,000 followers, but my engagement rate has been dropping consistently. And this is something I would like to touch on because... Yeah, this basically... <laughs> Facebook kind of like went from the golden era to like you barely any engagement. Instagram, they're doing the same thing. They're just kind of, you have to pay to play kind of thing. So it's transitioning. It sucks. <laughs> but also to kind of reassure you if you're trying to grow your Instagram account and it's not working. Because we in 2021, Instagram is completely crowded and growing organically right now is near impossible. Let's be honest. It's just near impossible why it was popular yeah, but that. it's not a proper artwork it's again just a study nothing against studies but yeah and then i have this one it's an artwork on which i worked over a few months and i think it's really good it's a proper artwork um i'm not saying it's a masterpiece <laughs> I, wouldn't, I would not be here on youtube if, if i would be able to make masterpieces but this one got i think three thousand likes something like that a half of that one now does that mean that the study is better than the artwork? No, it doesn't. Absolutely not. And if you think that, then um, you, you've got a problem on your hands. And this is something that I see repeatedly on Instagram, not just on my feed, but on other people's feeds. It's pretty interesting. The pizza's done. <laughs> artists I follow, or friends, artists that I follow or like, and sometimes certain posts will blow up for unknown reasons, <laughs> uh, while other artworks, which are far superior, will get just a fraction of just... That, the baby. <laughs> out, so. Oh, it's a cat. <laughs> Let's skip that. She should have just cut that out. But... I don't remember the name. Character development? Uh, game development, you know, that kind of digital art. Um, you do work with clients, so that's a bit different. And then you do work for the masses, so again, a bit different. But in the fine art department, where you do work that's pretty much useless, <laughs> so another topic. When you do artworks that are going to be sold to an art collector and that are more focused on your vision of the world so yeah it's 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 a niche uh, you have to be focused on yourself because if you start wondering about what gets the most likes and start to shift your um, your style or what you're interested in towards that specific what works then you are going to kill yourself as, as an artist really you want to show well, your own yeah i think that's where i'm at <laughs> i did a lot of realism and <laughs> I end up like, I don't even like half of it, so. Vision of the world. It's probably not going to please everybody. Let's skip ahead a little bit. To be featured in an art magazine soon. I get interviews. Um, I sell my artwork. I'm, I'm doing all right. My career is, is fine. I'm not super rich, but I mean, no artist is, so. <laughs> if I just look at the stats of my social media, I could get depressed but it's not a reflection of my actual art career and it's also not a reflection of the quality of my artwork. 
I'm not saying that this artist is not doing great artwork, he's amazing. I'm going to link his Instagram down below, it's an, a Spanish guy, uh, Vorja, I don't know how you pronounce it, Vorja, probably, illustration, something like that. I will link it down below. He's doing amazing, I'm really glad he's getting so much engagement lately. It was just an example to show you. I can't find many examples where you compare likes, but again, it, it's a bit pointless because it's not showing anything about the quality of the artwork. Now, does that mean you should ditch Instagram? Generally speaking, I would say no, but it depends. Yeah, the other thing too is with Instagram and social media is you're getting kind of a flash in the pan. And if you have like a newsletter, you get people off, get them leads, get their email, and then you're pitching them. You can have very high open rates. So maybe I have maybe 30% of my people, they open 60%. So, you know, maybe a good 20% of my stuff is opened. And if you look at what you put on Instagram, I mean, good luck getting 20% open rates. <laughs> So it's much better to develop your email marketing list and try to really develop that. You obviously use Instagram, Facebook, all this stuff, but you can really gain those, you can really pull those people off and you can pitch them a lot more aggressively on email. Let's skip ahead a little bit more. You link that down below. And he does a lot of reviews of, he does urban sketching, so a lot of reviews are about watercolors and supplies anyway. So he commented on another video, I think it was Holly, and he said that when you post on YouTube or when you post on your blog, then the post doesn't get lost in time. Meaning when you post on Instagram on, or when you post on Twitter, your post is only relevant for a few hours to a few days and then it's kind of dead and it doesn't matter anymore. No one is yep. going to find your work from a post three years ago. However, yep. when you blog and when you do YouTube videos, it will because you, there's a search engine that goes with it and when you online search you usually find YouTube videos and blog posts so those two things are much more important for your art career even if you don't see the immediate results yeah I totally agree with that just on the Google search yeah I find that also with um, blogs I have people find my old movie reviews I used to do movie reviews text based which is much better for Google obviously and I switched to video and I didn't go back, but it's not very searchable. So it's probably smarter to do it all text-based. But I have people find those old blogs on my videos from years ago. And I'm like, why are they finding this? <laughs> so blogs last a long time. So the more you write, the better it is. You'll really build up and scale up. Let's scribble ahead a little bit to the end here. And you're not, um, in fact, no, no, nobody, nobody is amazing. Well, I mean, there are a few geniuses here and there. Uh, I, I, I cannot think of anyone right now living i mean but there are a few geniuses uh but most likely you're not a genius like i'm not a genius that's just how it is and that's fine um but yes yeah, so a few things that i wanted to talk about with you um yeah i think that's pretty much it okay so we'll leave it there it's kind of a quirky video <laughs> but it's a very cool video to kind of talk um behind the scenes kind of as an artist how you should use instagram this is pretty new from 2021 so it's very recent about how instagram works and how it's evolved over time so i think it's probably a good video to check out more in depth and see it the full length which is 17 minutes i've obviously skimmed it let's go and check her website so her website looks very similar to youtube has kind of a skim of the uh Sculptures there. Uh, she has a little bit of a brief introduction. It's really nice. I think this is probably a Squarespace site, it looks like. She has a Pinterest uh, post there, which is really cool. She's connected to Pinterest. So that's really nice. Pinterest is very nice if you have, if you skew female, it's more Pinterest. Obviously, you want to be on Pinterest. I've been on there, but I haven't posted in a long time, actually. I just post my videos there. Been lazy. Um, I think because it's the way it works is weird. Um, I, so I like this really beginning. It's really nice. Uh, just a little snapshot of her videos. She has a blog up front. Um, I don't know if I'd have the blog up front like that. That's kind of strange, but. So I don't see any text, so I don't know how this is a blog, but maybe it's just she means to photographs. Um, maybe she switched up, so it's more just photographs. Well, I guess you can read more. So this is just the photos and you click on it, but it's not obvious that you click on there and you get text, but that's kind of cool. So she has her sculptures, wall sculptures, discarded objects, paintings, available works. Let's check that. 
art available through galleries. So she's doing really well. She's selling all, mostly through her galleries, which is you know obviously the ideal setting for an artist. Um, she sells prints herself. Um, she has stuff from Redbubble, Society6, and print. So that's really cool because she has a couple different print shops. I mean, there's no reason not to use multiple print shops. You got a nice backup if one fall fails or whatever goes askew. You can always have one already ready to go. So it's good to have at least two, I think. Um, she has art classes. <coughs> so she has some Skillshare stuff, which is really cool. Got a YouTube channel, of course. Art supplies. I really like this website or this page particularly. It's just a nice summary of all different art books and art classes. And she has you know videos and it's just kind of a really nice photo text, photo text, photo text. And so it's very visual, which is great for... And she has her bio over here. So she has a little bit about herself, which is fun. Sometimes you, people use a state um, called about versus a statement. So this is what the galleries always want. I just don't ever see the point of a, a statement and resume and all that, but it helps to get into galleries. <laughs> it's like whatever, you know. Um, oh, she's actually in architecture. That's pretty interesting because I wanted to study architecture. She's like this is completely non-architectural style of art, but it's it's pretty interesting. I don't. She probably does architecture full time, and this is her side gig. I guess I don't know. But she's been doing this quite a while, so maybe she's doing full-time art as well. So, yeah, it's a pretty nice website. Very clean, very simple, easy to follow through. I don't see any lead magnets, but she's already in galleries, so she's doing pretty well. Once you get to the gallery stage, you're kind of, you know, at that stage where you're selling your work at the level you want. So I don't think um, she's doing badly, obviously. I could do, like, her logo, like Stephanie Kilgas. You might want to write that out, kind of a script versus just block letters like that. It would look a little bit more like her signature, I think, would be cooler. I have mine kind of faked out like that. I don't think mine is like that either, so I should follow my own advice, right? <laughs> but anyway, that's uh, Stephanie Kilgrass. I encourage you guys to check it out. Uh, if you'd like to uh, subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you on the next Artist React video.